Welcome to Stony Brook Finance Lab channel. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Mohammed Saib Zada, and today I'll be presenting our project on investment strategy and our plan to take you from rags to riches. I will be accompanied by my colleagues, Ali and Chris, and we'll be discussing some important strategies. Let's take it away. So to start off, here's some background information about our client. So meet Joe, he is a recent graduate of Stony Brook University. He graduated with a BS in business administration. Joe has a postgraduate job offer. He will be an entry-level sales associate making around $50,000 a year before taxes. If he hits his company's sales target, he will get an additional $11,250 in commission. Joe is gonna be living with his parents post-graduation and he'll be working remotely. They also agreed to cover the cost of his living for the next three years. Additionally, Joe has a current student loan debt of $10,000. So some investment vehicles that Joe plans to take advantage of are investing in a Roth IRA, some blue chip stocks such as Apple, Amazon, Google, et cetera, some value stocks, dividends, high yields, ETFs, and real estate investments. So what are Joe's goals? His short-term goals are to pay off his student debt, maximize his Roth IRA contributions, which is a $6,000 a year. Um, they are to start an emergency fund, which is at least $1,000 a year, and invest in a, rain, a remaining amount. And the strategy will be on the next slide. Some long-term goals that Joe has is to find a new place to live, spend responsibility, responsibly on utilities, place a down payment on a house, put a down payment on a car, and to continue building investments. Ultimately, he would like to retire at the age of, 30, uh, at the age of 65. And now I'll be passing it off to one of my colleagues. Hello, my name is Ali. Thank you, Mohammed, for passing the microphone. Uh, so when it comes to Joe's investment strategy, we want Joe to have a very conservative investment strategy given his uh, entry level job and his student debt. So with the conservative investment strategy, we'd be investing in blue chip stocks, dividend stocks, and ETFs and value stocks. Value stocks, if you don't know what they are, are similar to just whatever company that you use, that's the value stock. If you use the company and use their products, that's something that you should probably invest in as well. Uh, diversification into all these sectors, as well as keeping the holdings in the portfolio will help compound interest for the portfolio for Joe. When analyzing the risk and return, to maximize the return, the portfolio, when invested in ETFs and blue chip companies, the stock market generates approximately about 10% a 10 increase yearly in returns. So following the ETFs and conservative investment strategy, the portfolio can expect and also can also expect a 10% increase. To minimize risk, however, the strategy does aim to diversify into stable ETFs and companies that will help hold uh, that will help hold the portfolio its value during a collapse or any pullback or any uncertain times throughout the market. So, and also we only have two rules for Joe for mistakes to avoid and principles to success. The two biggest rules for Joe's investment strategy are to remove his emotions and to keep holding for compound interest. When you keep holding for compound interest, the money will keep growing in the state. And when you remove emotions from your trading and from your investing, when you see the stock market is down or you see you losing some money on your investment without any emotions, then you'll know that you can hold it and it'll be safe for a future uh, long-term investment. And leading into the next slide, we're going to talk about the uh, short-term goals. So on the right, we calculated within, uh, given a very uh, beneficial market where with, that would increase 10% yearly. And if everything goes well, so starting in year one, he would have an income of 50000 Taking the income tax out, he would be left, and he would hit commission for that first year too. And with the commission tax rate, he'd be left with a net pay of 47,000. And we want to aggressively pay off those student loans in year one. So in year one, the student loans are all going to be paid off. And with a maximum contribution with uh, beginning in year one with Roth IRA, we will also take another 6,000 out right there. So his total income for that his first year, he will be left with 31,375. And we want to start investing with that, uh, his first paycheck, his first yearly uh, paycheck. We want to take that and start investing some of it. So we want to take 10000 and invest it onto uh, long-term companies and 
diversified amongst the ETFs, blue chips, value stocks, and dividends, like we said before. And given a 10% increase, a ten a ten thousand dollar investment will return a thousand dollars, making his total return for the making his total return on that year uh, eleven thousand, including his initial investment. So taking uh, that ten thousand that he invested, he would be left with twenty one thousand cash. And when we set up his emergency fund of one thousand dollars cash yearly, he'd be left with twenty uh, twenty thousand twenty thousand three hundred seventy five to be exact. So given if you look at the uh, long-term investment goals and you see in, into the next year, when you take his year before and his next year's investment of 20,000, he'll have a total return of 33,000. And then in year three, when he takes an investment of 15,000 from his uh, yearly income, with the 10% increase, he will have 16,500 and a total return of 49,500. So after three years of investing, he would have 49, nearly $50,000. And with his total spending cash that he has, from working, he would have a total net worth of about $110,000. And so as you can see, his net worth is increasing exponentially yearly. So doing that will enable Joe to achieve his long-term goals of a house down payment and even a payment on a car by year four. So now we'll pass the slides to Chris. So going into Joe's long-term goals, um, there are some key instruments that we want to take a look into. Specifically, we want to delve into a Roth IRA and what exactly is a Roth IRA. As we had mentioned earlier, Joe is putting in $6,000 a, a year, that's a typo, into the Roth IRA, but why is he doing that? A Roth IRA, IRA standing for Individual Retirement Account, is a way that Joe can put in money into this account so that he can take it out by the age of 65, um, but you need a minimum of 50, you have to be a minimum of 59 years old to pull out this money. And from there, Joe can benefit from a tax-free retirement fund. Um, how exactly a Roth IRA works is Joe is going to put that $6,000 into his Roth IRA and he's going to pay tax upfront so that he does not have to pay for it um, when he eventually decides to retire and take all of his money out. Um, on the right, you can see um, we have two different calculators to, to see how Joe's Roth IRA will pay off for him in two different markets. On the top here, you can see if, a, um, if the market returns an annual return of 7%, Joe will come home with 60 at with 1,486,659 at the age of 65. And if the market continues to grow at a 10% increase, um, Joe will walk home with around $3.5 million by the age of 65. These two giant sums of money um, should leave Joe well, well enough money uh, to live off of his investments for the rest of his retirement. Um, like I had written in the bottom of this slide, um, if Joe wished to live off of these investments with the Roth IRA alone, um, if he wanted to take out 4% of his investment, um, with the thinking being that the, um, the stock market is gonna grow at least by 7%, so his money is always going to be growing, um, Joe will be able to take out $60,000 a year if, he, if the market only grows by 7%, and he'll be able to take out almost $150,000 a year if the market was growing at 10%. Um, and if you just wanna take a look at the next slide with me, we can see how important it is that Joe is investing as early as he can. Um, on the top one, on the top graph, you can see what would happen if Joe were to start investing $6,000 every year from the age of 22. Um, like I had said, Joe would come out at around 60 with $1.5 million. Um, this is assuming that the um, market's going to grow at 7%. It's going to a little bit conservative. Um, if Joe were to start investing at 30 years old with all of the same variables, um, you can see that he would be making half the money. So it is a, um, a must that Joe invest earlier rather than later. And I'm going to pass it back to Muhammad.
So thank you for giving that great breakdown of uh, the necessities in this investment strategy that we've plotted for Joe. Um, so I'd like to end off by giving some key takeaways. So the best time to start investing is now, as soon as possible. You know, it's true, the early bird gets the worm. You have to set yourself up for success, plan for your future, make long and short-term goals. Take advantage of the resources you have access to, for instance, the Stony Brook Finance Lab. And import, most importantly, don't be an emotional investor. Let money compound and let the interest grow your money. It is not about timing the market. It is about time in the market. And with that being said, I would like to thank you for your time. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel.